Yes. Well, the BO is already here. The, the BO, time plus, this gives you the 9.2. In other words, when we do the final calculation, this is going to be a 9.2 plus or minus. So that, that's calculated by the formula. So it's already there. So you're not wrong. It's just not, we already have it. So what's missing? Oh, yes, I'm going to pass it back to Joe. Yes, I'm sorry, what were you say? What? No, we said the RR squared, same thing. We have the B1 already. Yes. Degrees of freedom is built into the T. When you go to the T table to get this number, it's going to be uh, N minus 2 degrees of freedom. So sums. Well, it turns out you're right. They will be there, but why are you saying that? Why the sums of the X and Ys? I mean, you're not, I don't want you just to guess different parts of the chapter. You have a logic for it? What's the you see? Well, I'm going to give you the benefit of that because it turns out you brought the, the, compar the word comparison is relevant there. But I'm not sure if it's, that's what you, exactly what you meant. But so you're right. So let me, let me let, let, before, before you guys c c give me lots of random guesses, let me give you a little bit of a hint. Do you expect the, the, to be more <coughs> confident that your answer's right when you're trying to make a prediction where the x value that you're trying to predict is similar to the other x values as compared to maybe I'll try to make a prediction when x, when x equals 75 out here someplace. What's, what's going to give you a better prediction, when the x is similar to the previous x's or when x is all the way out to the extreme? When it's similar, because you have experience with those kind of numbers. So how do you express the typical x, the x bar? How do you express the fact that how close the new number is to the other numbers? x minus x bar. Um, it's xp minus x bar. So the average of all the other x's um, should be in the formula, and you really want to see how far apart your current prediction number is from the typical number, but do we care if it's three below or three above? So we want to get rid of the minus sign, so you square it, which is why there's a square root here, because we're squaring it, okay? Now, that, up to that point is pretty, I think it's logical. The next problem is the following. Let's say we're measuring the size of elephants. And you want to make a prediction for an elephant that weighs 5,000 pounds, and the typical elephant weighs 6,000 pounds. So it's 5,000 minus 6,000 is how much? Minus 1,000. When you square it, how much is minus 1,000 squared? Positive 1 million. So you have 1 million here. Let's say you have 10 elephants. 1 over 10 is how much? 0.1. And 1 is 1. So this number here is going to totally overwhelm that number. So you've got to have something that basically takes into account the scale of the problem. And measuring the standard deviation is a function of the scale or how, num how the numbers are spread out. So the bottom part of this formula, in order to basically take into account the scale problem, is a measure of the standard deviation. But instead of calculating the standard deviation the way we did it in chapter 3, now it turns out to be easy to do it this way. And we've seen this already. So when you said, uh, Paul, about these sums, the sums are here again. So this is it. This is your other major formula for the chapter. Now, let's, let's apply the formula. So let's find a 95% prediction interval for this particular data when x equals 7. So we've got to go through the following steps. First, you've got to figure out your y hat. Well, you plug in a 7. 7 times b1 is 7.7. .7. So the, the y hat, after all is said and done, is 9.2. Yes? But that's a 95% because the t was 95, I'm not sure. You said, you said, let's do an example with 99, with, ni with 90, 90 percent? Uh, or? Meaning, that would only work if, like, let's say we only cheat with the number we did, which we split up 5 percent. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if we had split up 0.1, it wouldn't have been 95, right? From the T? No, no, it's separate. In other words, you decide I want to be 95 percent accurate, so you say I want to be 95 percent. If I want to be 90 percent accurate, they put it, in other words, the t that we did previously will happen to be the same. That 0.05 t will be the same. That 4.3, what we said before, this 4.3 is going to show up again over here. You're right. But that's only because they're both 5 and 95. But if I make this 90, and this is 90, this will be a different number. The, 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 the t number that you look up at the table just is, you know, the two of them are, in this case, it will turn out to be the same, but it's really two separate types of problems. I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. But let's, let's finish it up. And I'll, so you had a question, uh, Alex. Yeah, the XP has to be given. In other words, you've got to be told what you're, what you're trying to make a prediction for. Which we want to end up with an answer and say, I'm 95% sure that if, if, somebody, if I put in $7,000 worth of advertising, I can expect somewhere between six and $10,000 worth of sales. 
Do we ending it with a pair of numbers right over here? Oh my God, 10 o'clock. Let's finish it up. T is how much? Well, how do you get to T? The T is done by going to the, the T table, making, like we did this for confidence interval, 95% is in the middle, which means 2.5% is over here. The degree of freedom in this chapter is n minus 2 or 4 minus 2 or 2. And if you look up two degrees of freedom in 0 to 5, you're going to happen to be 4.3027. So the number here is 4.3027. I'll try to say this again, but but a very common mistake on the test, folks. But please pay attention. This is very, very look, two or three mistakes everybody makes. Some people, instead of getting that this is T that you look up, you, the T here you look up. But what do you think some people put down? Where's that other T that we calculated? Now, remember B, B1 over, S1, uh, B, uh, over SYX. There's a, B, there's a T that you calculate previously, the calculated T. Don't put that number here. Again, just put down, this should really be called T that you table from the table. It's two-sided, 2.5% two and 95% and and in the middle. We're chopping the alpha in half like, like we did before. What? Four point. Well, we did. We happen to have done that before for the other four point three, zero two seven. So it's four point three zero seven. What is the S Y X? That's just a number you have to previously calculate as well, which we did one point sixteen. All right. So let's continue to square rooting. One is just built into the formula. Plus one over how much? Four plus. Now the X P is how much? Seven. What is the X bar? Well, what is the average? If you add these all up, you're going to get ten. 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. So the average x is 2.5. The formula requires that you square it. And what is the summation of the x squared? Well, we had that from, I think that was 30 minus, what was the summation of the x? That was 10 squared over 4. So it's 120. So the bottom part of this comes out to 5. Okay, so we, again, I'm, we, are, we are in overtime, but let me just finish this up. So if you're going to get, it turns out, after all is said and done, any, anybody doing this, anybody can do the calculation quickly, because the answer comes out to something like minus 2 to about 20. It's not exactly that, but it's going to be very close to that when you do it for homework and all the other homeworks, by the way. We, so we finished chapter 13, so do all of it. Now, I, again, I realize I'm, I'm pushing my luck with, but one more thing, though. This answer, minus 2 to 20, is here. Here's minus 2, and here's 20. Is that a good answer? It's a ridiculous answer. It's telling us that I believe it's going to be between minus 2. Now, we knew that's a crazy number. It's much too, why, is it, why is it so large in this particular case? Very quickly, why is it so large? Yes. No, that's, that's very typical. What? Because they're not related. If they're not related, you can't expect to make a prediction. Plus the fact is we have a sample size of four. It's a separate reason. So there are two reasons why we're getting such a ridiculous answer. The main reason they're not related, and secondly, is a small sample size.